Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the next session, which is going to be a super interesting session and pretty much talk of town in terms of topic. We're talking about franchise models in the vacation rental industry. And I'm super happy and also proud to have great speakers on the panel today who will share their wisdom and ideas about potential franchise models in different markets. We've managed to get people from the United States all the way to Australia on this panel today. So I wanna thank you in advance for making your time available at seven in the morning or nine o'clock in the evening in Sydney, Australia. That's very exciting. It's time to unite the industry and bring the entire world together and you have shown already a great start. So without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce our panelists today. So first off, we have Michael Friedman, Director of Sales and Expansion of Skyrun. Then we have Robin Koonen, who is the CMO and co-founder of Club EMR in Spain. Then we have Nino Dubretic, who is a co-founder and CEO of Direct Bookers in Croatia. And last but not least, uh, Quirin Schweighofer with a slight German accent, so don't wish for an Australian accent here. Uh, he's the co-founder and CEO of Made Comfy in Sydney. So we've got a great diversity of panelists today, which is super exciting to have you. Once again, thank you so much for making the time to be part of the AGL Profitability Hub second edition and, and share your wisdom with us. So I want to start with uh, Michael to give us a quick introduction of Skyrun and, and what, what does your company do in the United States? Thanks, Simon, and thanks for having me. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, uh, my name is Michael Friedman. I'm the Director of Sales and Expansion with Skyrun. Uh, we are a, a, a franchise model on um, vacation rental uh, management, property management. Uh, we're based in Boulder, Colorado, and we operate in about 30 locations currently, uh, just slightly over 1,000 properties, uh, mostly in North America, Canada, and Mexico, but obviously uh, looking to continue to grow that, and we're expanding in, in North America quite quickly as, as well. How long have you been in the industry, Michael? Skyrun, how long has, has Skyrun been around with the franchise model? Yeah, so we've been around since 2004. Uh, that's when the company was initially started in Keystone, uh, Colorado, uh, with about 100 properties. And we kind of pondered our next steps, looking at where, where do we go next? Do we, you know, um, do we add another 100 properties? But, you know, kind of looking at that, we realized that, you know, we'd like to not add more properties in the same market and compete with the 100 we started. Uh, so we started looking at and kind of pondering, you know, where, where's next? And we looked at the hotel industry and we saw that a lot of the larger brands were growing and those smaller mom and pops weren't, you know, weren't, um, you know, necessarily, you know, growing as fast. And we saw that opportunity to be able to grow in, into other markets where we found local entrepreneurs who were able to help us scale and grow. Wonderful. Wonderful. So there's, there's going to be a lot uh, to talk about, especially since you've been around for 16 years in the industry and obviously got a lot of experience as well. Um, uh, our second panelist is uh, Robin Koonen, CMO and co-founder of Club VMR. Great to have you, Robin. Uh, yeah, just shoot you. ahead. Introduce us, Club VMR. Yeah, Club Filmero is, uh, is our company and we rent out houses in Spain, uh, about uh, 3,500 of them now, uh, all villas with, uh, with private pool in the coastal areas. We have a couple of models uh, with which we work. Uh, one of them is uh, franchise partners and exclusive partners. So we work exclusively with them. We give them the bookings and they, they take care of the clients. It's about uh, 700 of those properties. And furthermore, we uh, work with homeowners directly and we also work with uh, XML partners, we just have a feed, we make the bookings and they take care of everything. And that's non-exclusive. So we've been doing that for uh, about 15 years now. So that means you're a total hybrid, right? So you're not purely franchise, you're actually a property manager yourself, but you also added on to it uh, as, a, as a hybrid model. Or what would you call your model? Yeah, oh, well, I think uh, hybrid is a, is, is a good uh, explanation. Uh, and uh, I like to think with, that we're working with uh, four different models. Uh, but you see that uh, uh, some people that we've been working with non-exclusively uh, later turned on into exclusivity deals. So uh, we've been uh, testing the market with them first non-exclusively and then we converted them to, uh, to exclusive. Wonderful. So I think we, our next uh, panelist is a pure player. The way I understand it, maybe he will tell us otherwise. Uh, Nino Dubredic from uh, Direct Bookers. He's uh, also a winner of the Shorties Awards. Uh, this year, which uh, was uh, fa fascinating uh, to see how quickly Direct Bookers made a name for themselves within the industry. You know, tell us about Direct Bookers. Hi, Simon. Hi, everybody. So, Direct Booker, 
is basically a property management company and also the technology provider. Uh, we made a proven franchise business model. So the brand is uh, 10 years old and uh, some numbers about Ira Booker, we are doing about uh, 100,000 reservations per year in 7,000 units. Uh, eight countries, uh, 22 franchises. So basically, uh, we are trying uh, to make four different product services in one. So we are doing the property management company here around the Browning with 3,500 units. From the other hand, we are trying to sell our technology and we also have uh, many users of our technology, what is the PMS and channel manager. On the third part, we are giving franchise and our franchisees also have 3,500 units for now. And also we are uh, investing highly now, especially in direct booking project. Wonderful. So, uh, yeah, distribution is obviously a key as well. I understand that obviously direct bookers is not direct bookers as it stands for right now, but that's something you obviously want to uh, take a lot of initiatives right now and makes a ton of sense uh, yeah. with, with how things have handled. And, and we'll get to that later because Robin's business is doing the 80% direct. So uh, you can uh, definitely learn from each other as well uh, how this is done because, uh, and, and now I'd love to hear that from Michael later on as well. But uh, before we start, uh, our next uh, panelist, the last but definitely not least, is uh, Quirin Schweighofer, who is the co-founder and CEO of uh, Made Comfy in, in Sydney. And interesting with, with Made Comfy is that they probably came from a different, bit of a different angle originally at Made Comfy, uh, but they're in, in an interesting process to also contemplate uh, to, to scale the business more on a franchise model as well. So we're very happy to have you uh, and, and thank you for staying up tonight. And uh, please introduce us, make comfy quickly, uh, Quirin. Thank you, Simon. Um, yeah, so I'm the Aussie with a German accent. It's always a funny <laughs> thing. Um, um, originally from Bavaria, so I have actually a Bavarian accent. It even gets weirder <laughs> when I talk with Germans. Um, so Made Comfy is around four years old. Um, we really started as a sort of classic um, property management business. Um, um, we've been uh, growing here in Australia um, in the mainly capital cities, so we are more of an urban uh, PM uh, in the past. And what really happened, um, we won the Shorties Award, fantastic, and then COVID happened. And all in that um, really caused us to, to think about how will Make Comfy A get through this? And um, we sort of always uh, saw that as a bit of a bigger changer to things. And we really didn't uh, uh, leave any stone un unturned. And in that, we identified several opportunities for us to, to evolve into and the whole franchise system in, in, in such. Um, we uh, saw that looking at the timing at the moment, how many smaller PMs are struggling and then looking at the strengths of Made Comfy, which is a, long, a lot around branding, technology, it sort of um, um, added a lot, of, a lot of value and sense to um, um, really look into the franchise uh, system and no one is doing that anywhere here in ANZ and um, yeah we are now on a, on a big push uh, into that. Wonderful and, and I hear that during COVID you're working in a protected market like many of us do right now so uh, there's big opportunities to keep the keep the competition out for a while while you're uh, you can master the domestic business as well but obviously uh, we're str there's a lot of companies, as you alluded to, Quirin, uh, that are struggling out there in the industry. And, and my first question to you guys, and, and I think I want to start with Robin first, um, is, you know, who would be your, your ideal candidate? And, and why should it, what should a PM consider while joining a, a larger network? And, and we've seen a lot of distressed PMs right now. They're looking for solutions for distribution to, to, to fight margin compression and others. And now you're sort of providing an opportunity. Uh, is it more technology or is it more distribution? Where would you see the ideal candidate, Robin, for you, for, for, for them to join uh, Club VMR in Spain? Yeah, well, the, the, the model that we've been working with uh, up until now is that um, we, we used to recruit from our ranks. Uh, so we're not really uh, into getting into other companies and saying, uh, okay, uh, I'd like to take uh, care of the technology and the bookings for you. Um, so um, it, it has to be somebody who's, uh, who's very, very serious because we're entering long-term relationships. Uh, also the franchise that we're working with now is, uh, have been over, over 10 years in, uh, in good times and, and in bad times. So it has to be uh, serious people because if, if there's one thing that of course we, we 
all, all of us cannot use is that we're wasting time on somebody who does not perform. Uh, so uh, their success is our success. Uh, so we're always uh, looking for the, for the right people to, uh, to do that. So there should be people that can work independently because you can be good at hospitality, but you can be awful at running a business. And we have to uh, find the people who can do uh, both. I think that's a great aspect, Robin. I think it makes a ton of sense because you, you want to consider quality because we all know more than ever now, you know, by, by all the standards that we require in terms of cleaning, guest experience and everything else, quality is, 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 is super important. Now you have big opportunities and I want to ask Michael that, you know, is it, is it that sky around growth for whatever it takes or uh, how do you approach that and who is the ideal partner for sky around in the United States right now? Yeah, that's a great question, Simon. You know, we when we look at uh, the ideal client, we we kind of see several opportunities. We we see you know individuals who are self maybe managing, but maybe managing three or four you know properties on their own, but are looking to scale. Um, we also look at smaller companies, obviously looking to grow and scale. But quality of our brand is really important, and really making sure that they adhere to the standards of the brand and and the quality of what we're doing as a company and growing. And we have a very rigorous process of making sure that when we find an individual, we take them through a, a multi-step process to first of all making sure that they're 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 a quality candidate, but you know doing certain assessments with them. Uh, on personality, behavior style, because th those styles are also going to be important as they, you know, as they continue to grow within our, our company and our brand. So Can I just jump quickly in there? Sorry to interrupt you, Michael. Is that for somebody who wants to start or is that somebody who already brings 50, 100 properties? Uh, yeah, that's, that's even for someone who brings 50 or 100 properties, because, you know, I think, you know, you can have 50 or 100 properties, but you might not be a good fit uh, for the vision and the direction that Skyrun is going as a brand. And uh, so obviously, you know, we, we vet those individuals very, very, like I said, rigorously. Uh, but, you know, we, we do that across the board and it seems to work really, really well. And then we even use that process when, when that person comes on board to help them scale and grow and find the right people for their team. No, absolutely. Makes a ton of sense. Wait, just quickly, would you rather be a distribution pitch or a technology pitch? Uh, I think we're both. I mean, I, I think, you know, we, we have our great own IT stack, but we also have that fabulous distribution. And that's the one thing I think, you know, I'd love to hear what everyone else has to say. But when we when we talk to someone about Skyrun, the two big values are economy of scale, you know, and then being able to have that own your own IT stack and distribution. So I want to throw that straight to Nino, because I think that's a that's a great way of of, of moving on to your business in, in, in Croatia, you know, I mean, you, you guys have grown to 7,000 units. You've got 22 franchisees. Um, who, who are your ideal candidate? Who can work with you and who can't work with you and why? In the beginning, as we opened uh, the market of the uh, other countries and uh, through our countries uh, with other offices, the ideal candidate was the, our employee as we decided to uh, lay off, let's say, uh, expanding uh, the business by ourselves. So we, the, our employees took the our franchise, what was the best uh, recommendation for us. Today, I would say that more or less any that uh, have time and they are, they are known that they are not going to get rich over the night because uh, the business is growing uh, meeting per meeting, brick by brick, uh, contract per contract and reservation per reservation. So what we are trying to find is a small property management company or uh, up to 100 properties or the beginner, but it's important to uh, follow standards and procedures as it is already proven and successful. So before we take that further, because I, you know, after this, I would like to talk about pain points, but before we do that, you know, because this is really an overarching uh, question to all of you, uh, also in Australia, what, what do you envisage and what do you see in terms of your growth strategy uh, made comfy query and, and, and who would fit? What would be your ideal candidate to a, you know, this is the perfect company we want to work with as made comfy to, to get the synergies that you want to propose to a franchisee? That's a great question. Um, what um, difference made, um, differentiates Made Comfy is that we really focus on um, the professional uh, short-term rentals. And so our perfect fit um, is, is a short-term rental manager that has um, 50, 100 units that um, is currently, and we sort of had the bushfires previously as well. So we had this double whammy, um, really um, struggling with bookings. 
and um, is um, uh, passionate about what, what, uh, what they want to do. And um, it, it totally fits with our uh, values and our vision. We've always been uh, a very value-driven uh, company and uh, we see that not different to, to partners that um, are going to work with us. Um, overall, where we add the most value um, is, um, is about bringing bookings. Um, this is sort of what, uh, what is the biggest um, pain point for anyone uh, here in Australia. And given that we are going to be isolated for, I don't know, for the next 12 months until there's a vaccine, um, it will be, um, a majority of international travel will be, will be gone. So um, helping with that and giving them the power of, um, of um, um, reaching those domestic uh, uh, tourists is where we will focus on. And um, yeah, for that, anyone that has a quality uh, stock, it's uh, very important, um, it may come to, we've always been focusing on um, the right properties, quality, uh, to have a consistent experience. And um, if you've got that, um, and uh, you have a vision and passion for the industry, then uh, you are uh, a good fit uh, for us. You know, I mean, th this is something we've always envisaged, you know, who is going to create the McDonald's of this industry? Because when you go to McDonald's, you know what you get, right? Pretty much anywhere in the world, you know, there might be a little bit more fish or something else. But in terms of McDonald's, I think we, we all can relate to the standards of McDonald's. I, I'm not saying if you like it or not, that's not what I meant. Uh, I leave that up to everybody individually, uh, what they think about fast food. But, but I'm thinking about, you know, when you, when you know something like this, and I think that's one of the most successful franchise programs or Starbucks, uh, very similar. If you go to a Starbucks, no matter where in the world, you, you pretty know, uh, know what you expect. And, and you raised that point, Queer, and I think that's uh, super interesting. You know, and, and maybe that question back to Nino, you know, how do you manage that? You know, I mean, you want, you want that direct booker stance for something. And how do you make sure that your franchisee are adhering to that? Uh, we made a, a work position in our office as a concept manager. The person who is uh, personally controlling each franchisee that uh, he is taking over our standards and procedures to take the maximum results because uh, to come to 300 units from the franchisees, it cannot be done by itself. So it's always about uh, control. They are the different companies but uh, we need to have the control that uh, our procedures are going through because if they are not, maybe it will not be so successful. Yeah, absolutely. So control measures are super important. You also have visibility on reviews, so we can, uh, you can give them a smack on the hand if, if, if things do not work out, but I guess it's, it's pretty challenging. Now for you, Michael, when you, when you onboard or, or work with franchisees. I mean, you're director sales, but you're also looking for growth and, and you haven't been there for that long. But, you know, what's, what are the biggest pain points for franchisees to, to join something like that? And we haven't even talked about COVID or post-COVID because now it's all about, you know, protecting yourself. But in a, in a, in a, in a normal world, what, what, what would be the, the largest pain points for a franchisee to join uh, Skyrun? What are his pain points? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say there's several. I mean, obviously, recruiting, recruiting, recruiting great talent, understanding, creating brand loyalty, having a great marketing plan. But I think the biggest one, Simon, is, you know, we continue to see this uh, is expense control. You know, there's this downward pressure on commission rates and margins that, you know, continue to be an industry trend. OTAs want more you know, of the pie. And I think keeping up with those technology trends and the expenses is, is complex. And, you know, one of the things I, we really believe is that seeing all of our markets, they need to be able to operate profitably at lower commission rates because that's, that's happening here in the United States. So you're covering all your inventory with one contract, basically with the OTAs. Correct. Yep. Yep, exactly. And, you know, and being able to use those systems, you know, in economies of scale, we can actually operate, you know, more efficiently and effectively where we can operate, say, 20 to 30 units with one employee in a market versus, you know, a traditional PM where the industry average might be one, one person for five to 10 properties. So because of that scalability, we're able to actually manage more units and do it more profitably. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And I, I think from that topic, I want to move on to, to Robin in terms of protection and markets. Since, since Club EMR is a, <clears throat> is a hybrid model, but you sort of own the distribution, right? And, and how, 
how do you make sure that your 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 different models that you have i think you have four different types fully integrated xml feeds and agency models so you give a lot of flexibility as well how do you make sure that even in crisis periods like now that these guys are not starting to eat over the fence of one another yeah uh, well we have a I never understood that this was uh, special, but we, we book over over 90% directly. Uh, so we're, our dependence on the OTAs is really small. Uh, it's, it's, it's less than, uh, than, than 10%, which means that we can do our marketing and our own technology. We can do it for cheaper than what we normally pay to, uh, to the OTAs. Uh, but also that uh, we have more control over, the, over let's say, the cancellations. And so uh, um, uh, other parties that have been very much uh, reliant on, 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 the, on the OTAs, I've seen a lot of cancellation. We've only seen about 4% on the bookings that we had when COVID started. So uh, with that, uh, I would say, okay, we, we, we got that back. Uh, and they know that we're doing everything to keep our owners, uh, uh, which are also their owners, to keep them happy and uh, keep all the, all the bookings in the basket. So you, you build a lot of trust over all these years. And obviously you build a lot of demand and you build solid businesses for them uh, as well. Why are you building that? So that's t totally crucial now that they're sticking with you and say, hey, Claudio Omar will take care of my demand and I, I need to execute uh, operation as well. So I think that's a, that's a perfect example. Now, going back to, to Nino in terms of when we look at uh, the franchise a bit broader, I used the, 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 the McDonald's um, example before we know Marriott one of the largest hotel companies in the world they own like six hotels out of more than 6,000 um, so this this business model as a franchise has been around for many 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 years and and it's actually nothing new to us as a as a, as a normal consumer in, in pretty much any commercial vertical uh, being it garages whatever that means franchises everywhere why has it taken our industry that long? And what are the biggest challenges for us in the, in the short-term rental vacation rental industry to build a meaningful franchise model? What do you think, Nino? Is, why is the reason is that? The biggest problem was, it's, it's obvious, it's the local presence of this industry. So you need to start with a few apartments and uh, you are already successful. So thinking about franchise in that uh, effect, it's something unusual. From the other side, if you are thinking about opening a hotel, it's uh, logical that you are thinking about to be a uh, part of some big chain. So the biggest challenge in our industry is to make aware uh, property managers with the fact, in our case, uh, that uh, if they run 40 properties and they are paying technology for uh, market cost that it is right now that uh, with our royalty franchise fee, they uh, save may maybe double money only on technology and they get the cover of the bigger brand, the technology, the know-how support and even the uh, new income from the selling technology because I, I'm doing in my company uh, all acquisition and uh, I had maybe in that 10 years uh, 5,000 meetings and uh, in each meeting you are offering your service or technology. So it's the same with the franchisee. They can start earning on some new uh, thing that they can uh, if they only rent some uh, solution. So, you know, that may, because one thing that we, I think we're all uh, agreeing about is this industry is not going to consolidate as fast as we thought because, you know, pre COVID, it was pretty aggressive out there. There was a strong buyer's market, uh, a, a seller's market as well. Uh, and then the buyers were there driving prices and, and we talked about globalization and everything else. And I think COVID-19, especially with domestic travel has shown us how, how hyper-local we are and, and, and we need to address those points uh, extremely quickly. And I believe now for the franchise model is there hasn't been better times than now if, if you can sort of offload some of the challenges and burdens that you've had during this super difficult time uh, and not worrying about everything, but maybe only worry about half of it is already a win. Um, and, and, and the same goes for Australia. So Australia is already a very strong domestic market. And, and what I would love to know from Quirin, going back to the, to the uh, McDonald's uh, analogy, you know, we know that if, you, if you're able to get a, a McDonald's franchise, I guess it depends where now, but in the past it was pretty much uh, secure, it became a millionaire. Um, you know, how quickly can I become a millionaire if I'm, if I'm joining Made Comfy? And uh, where do I need to be? And what is your value proposition 
uh, and, and plans overall? It's a great question, I guess. Um, how much are you willing to uh, put into this? I think even if you get a McDonald's franchise, if you don't put in the effort and do your four hour work week, it's going to be a tough ride. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I, I think the analogy with them, uh, uh, McDonald's, I think what we um, will not get to is that we are able to, um, in short-term rentals or vacation rentals, that we, we are able to control everything like a McDonald's controls, where everything down to the toilet paper holder is going to design um, to be the same. But I think we need to think about what is our Big Mac. And um, that Big Mac uh, gets, gets people that go, got me to go, gets me to go to McDonald's and um, it's not the toilet holder. Um, but what is our Big Mac? And um, that can be something that is simply um, important for, for the kind of type of guest that you're trying to attract. And um, from a company, we've been looking at, at many, many things like, for example, important parts like um, the, type, the, the way to check into a property, the pillows, um, um, making sure there is a coffee machine, for example. So having a few things that you can control and that you can guarantee, and then being able to communicate that to uh, the guest. Now, that's sort of how we sort of see um, how to build um, a brand that can be maybe like McDonald's, but um, it has a Big Mac, which yeah. is maybe the pillow. And um, and um, looking at um, Australia, um, there is an amazing opportunity with every crisis. And I think we all heard that now for so many times. Um, but the fact is we are in a crisis and um, what you uh, pretty much now need, you need to be um, able to, to do something uh, different, to work hard. And um, what we can help with, um, uh, I, I guess, as a, a franchise uh, a company, that all of us is to, to help those that really um, want to have a different chance in something else or, or want to um, uh, really give it a go. Um, being supported um, um, uh, by branding with technology, something that they were previously maybe not being open to. Um, it's more hard to, but I think we all need to think about what's the value proposition that we bring, um, uh, what's the right of existence, and um, why will um, property managers be better off, as Nino said, um, uh, joining a franchise rather than doing it themselves. Um, and, Absolutely. Um, if we are clear about that, then uh, I think we're on a good path. Excellent. And this is what I really enjoy about this group because it's still pretty diverse as well in terms of approach. And I think the, the, the big mega club EMR looks a lot different than, uh, than maybe in Australia where you put more the quality on execution and, and, and whatever. So maybe Robin, I mean, because since you have more a hybrid model, I think distribution comes pretty much on top of your, uh, um, let's say value proposition to the point that Corinne has raised. That's beautiful to see, you know, where are the different value propositions amongst the four of you? Uh, there's definitely differences and there's uh, def definitely certain communalities. You know, especially now we did this, this, we even pre COVID, we started to talk about standardization. We talked about, you know, guests need the, uh, this hospitality, um, this, this, this hospitality like product. And then, you know, we all know how difficult it is to, to deal with a thousand different owners and, and get them there where we want them to get. And I think that's, that's a big challenge and will remain a big challenge. But I think it really depends where you put your focus, what you really want to control for your brand and your, your let's say, franchise model and what you leave entirely up uh, to the operators and, and to the homeowners. Maybe, uh, Robin, you can share your philosophy on that with us. Yeah, yeah. We've uh, from early on, we've uh, we've really thought that that we have to concentrate on uh, on houses with uh, with private pool and really make a difference in that uh, in that segment. And that also gives that is, that's where we where we build up our brand. That's uh, how we can do marketing. We know how to do marketing, and there's always where uh, also where the the margin uh, still makes a lot of sense. Uh, so that's what we are putting forward to our uh, to our partners. Uh, and as long as they focus on uh, on that, we we know that we have the clients for that. Uh, so that's also with uh, with finding uh, people from our ranks who are uh, who are helping us out or other properties. We we will sure be doing a lot of market research to see if we can actually find find people for it because our our niche is uh, fill us with private pool uh, within a couple of kilometers of the of the coast of Spain. So I think that's uh, that's very strong that we bring uh, bring to the table that we have actually have the clients for it. So we have another one in terms of value. That's a great point, Robin, in terms of the, the product itself. You know, this is what we do and this is what we have. And 
and join us if you have that and 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 don't join us if 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 you don't because that's not what our target market that we market for is is actually looking for so you're making this very demand depending and obviously on 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 the customer that you're already working with how does that work for you, Michael? I mean, we could go forever in terms of supplies. You can you can centrally source shampoos and ta- like uh, linen and, and and everything. How does Skyrun take an approach in in terms of the standards going down from distribution and technology? Yeah, we you know we we're very similar to, to everyone what everyone shared. I mean, I think the biggest thing you know we we want our our local entrepreneur owners in the markets that we're in to be able to focus on what they really need to do. And that's, you know, owner acquisition. So having our own internal marketing team and department, you know, that creates content for them, that creates promotional pieces that helps them develop strategies on how to acquire and go out and get owners. Um, You know, not having to worry, excuse me, not having to worry about the tech stack, you know, having 24 seven support, you know, that they normally wouldn't get maybe with, you know, with another company and then being able to have, like I said earlier, those economies of scale to be able to get better pricing on, you know, insurance and, and supplies and things of that nature. But our focus is really making sure too that all of our, our location owners are, are really properly trained. We put them through a very rigorous training, three week training process, and that's to really embed them into the brand of Skyrun. Is now, that I'm, repeated? What's that? The training, is that repeated or is that a one-off? That's just the one off. So we do two, two weeks in Denver and then we'd actually do a week in their market as well. And then there's ongoing consulting and coaching uh, that we provide. And then we give them obviously uh, free access to vacation rental university because I can do that. So, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Absolutely. There's one for um, Micah Burke at the vacation rental university, which we also support these type of initiatives for sure. Um, so, so Nino, I, I, Michael gave me a great word uh, that I would like to pick up on and, and be, a, I, I guess, a bit cynical or critical to direct bookers. So, you know, we have met together personally and I see you as a very great businessman. You're very focused and, and you know exactly where you want to go. Does, does entrepreneurship have space with becoming a franchise in your organization? And how do you deal with that? Because, you know, I could now argue that being an entrepreneur is super important, but if you don't give them freedom, then entrepreneurs cannot, can, cannot grow business. How, how would that relate with working with direct bookers? Oh, yes, they have uh, freedom. Uh, we even outsourcing the cleaning and checking here in Dubrovnik. We need to stood our ground because uh, we found ourselves in a big uh, uh, growth and uh, we, we were opening the market by ourselves, uh, doing the cleaning and check-in, making technology, uh, pr- uh, producing with new uh, projects uh, in direct booking and stuff like that. And then we stood and said, okay, we need to outsource something and we outsourced the franchise or expansion and also we outsourced the cleaning and check-in. So let's say uh, that uh, all of our uh, franchisees can be also the uh, property management company that they are doing the cleaning and check-in by themselves. We are not doing it. They can do and they can uh, do whatever we, they want with that. Of course, the brand direct booker stays, but uh, let's say we give the standards and procedures from our outsource partner, but it's all about them, how they are going to develop that part. So more than welcome. How does that work for Make Comfy? I mean, you were pretty strong on quality and, and even all, all the way down into pillow, uh, pillows as well. And obviously you want to build a brand across uh, the A and Z um, querying. You know, how, how do you deal with this balance of entrepreneurship? You know, we, we, we potentially could, let's, let's assume you have a, a PM in Brisbane who wants to join you, who has been around maybe five, 10 years, has its own brand, has some direct business. How would that work and how would you allow entrepreneurship within within the umbrella of my company? Um, I think that's a, um, a quite a, quite easy answer. It's it's if I look at myself, um, I'm an entrepreneur myself and I have to operate within the make comfy guidelines. I can't just use certain other colors. I can't just do things in a certain way. So I think um, providing some guidelines where you also 
um, really explain why it is more successful. So when I look at our sales team, um, and look at all our team members in my company, they're all entrepreneurs themselves. We've been growing, changing so much, and uh, all of them have to be, they need that inner thing in them uh, uh, um, uh, in, in a certain way. So, so I think um, it is a requirement for, for franchises. It is important to, to um, give them the freedom where they can have the freedom and where it simply adds value. And if that is um, um, around uh, how to uh, communicate with certain, certain property owners, if that is about adding their sort of um, personal touch in a way that it doesn't break your sort of Big Mac rule, um, I think um, that is good. Um, but it does require a very clear, clear structure, communication, and um, um, like we work with OKRs, for example, um, um, there's a KPI. Maybe you that, want to explain uh, that quickly. That OKRs is objective key results. So it is an easy way to, to structure the, the business around um, a common vision and then having different uh, objectives that um, you want to achieve as a business or as a franchise business and um, then certain key results that you want to achieve. And um, how you do that, doesn't matter, but um, there are certain things that um, uh, that are expected, and then um, uh, certain processes or certain mini red tape that you can't cross. It's in, especially around legislation, um, uh, health um, uh, care, especially now, uh, very important. Where you simply have to follow rules, and um, yeah, that's um, one framework that, that that works really well. I think. Absolutely, I think that's an important point you mentioned <clears throat> from and are addressing this entrepreneurship, but also when there's regulatory issues uh, coming into play, then obviously there is non-negotiable, there's nothing is negotiable because it's obviously your own brand as well. And then you need to see how you can separate that legally. So <clears throat> we've talked about operation, we've talked about franchise as a model and, and the different types and the different uh, focus points as well. But I think one thing that uh, we should never forget and, and Nino has mentioned it at the beginning as well in, in terms of you know, the number of units and the number of properties and, and, and obviously that's, that's sort of the lifeblood for our business going forward. And, and there's a question to Robin to start with at Clavia Mar, um, is that also in your focus point to help help some a partner of yours who wants to work with Club AMR to actually help them grow the inventory. I think that's the, the biggest challenge. I mean, OTAs have given us the opportunity to grow fast, um, you know, with, with some disastrous result lately because our dependency was too high. So I think everybody's reviewing their distribution strategy going forward for sure. And if they're not, they, uh, they definitely should. But, but in terms of inventory now, I mean, what can Club VMR do for me if I'm a partner of yours to, to let me grow my inventory, if you do? Yeah, well, I'm extremely enthusiastic about uh, the time period that's coming up because I heard before that every crisis gives an, uh, gives an opportunity. Uh, and there are so many homeowners that uh, try to rent out themselves through, uh, through the OTAs and really had a bad experience this year. So it will, uh, thanks to them, it will be a lot easier to get more inventory for, uh, for our brand. So we're, we're, we're perfectly happy with that. We do have some uh, other issues uh, because that's what was one of the pain points. Uh, so the churn rate, uh, but now I'm sure that a lot of owners will stick with us because we're taking good care of them. Uh, and also uh, uh, moving forward and getting, getting new, uh, new ones in. Uh, but then you have uh, regulations. So there was a, a big, big regulation being pushed in, uh, in Spain. Um, and that, that, that was one of the things that, that, that kind of hold uh, our growth back. And we're in uh, certain uh, areas like, uh, um, uh, how do you call it, the, 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 the institutions that, that promote uh, vacation rental and just give the, give the better name and, and structurize uh, stuff like that. So we, we help with that. And on the acquisition, man, it's, it's our focal point. So we really, we really push on that. So we're, we're measuring our KPIs. So, okay, how many, uh, how many do you have in the pipeline? How many are coming off? Uh, and we did such, such crazy things with heavy incentives for owners. Uh, we gave away uh, laptops, cameras. <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, we, we really, really, really want to have contracts. Uh, uh, and also uh, incentives for our, for our partners, for any contract signed and, uh, and everything. And that's, that's, that, that has been turning out uh, very well and it will be, it will be spectacular in the, in the time to come, exciting times. So <clears throat> we've, if we would translate that, that you have said in terms of opportunities and everything else to the US, then Michael shouldn't even have time to have a video call with us because he should be on the road. 
uh, scr- like raking it in. So how do you address the growth opportunities, Michael? And please share with the audience how you, what do you see your opportunities as director and sales of growth of Skyron right now with, with on the basis of what Robin said in terms of inventory and, and growth? Yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're, we're extremely busy and, and really blessed for that. Um, I, I think the biggest thing, you know, we have, we have done at Skyrun is when a, when a new market owner comes on board is, as I said earlier, we're taking a lot of the heavy lifting off of their plate, you know, not having, you know, them to worry about their tech stack and you know, how that's going to operate and then being able to create and have a marketing team behind the scenes for them of being able to create all of their marketing tools and pieces that they're going to need so they can focus and go out and grow inventory as well. Now we're also doing at that at the national brand level through national brand marketing and things of that nature, but also then supporting them at the local level. And, and that seems to be working really, really well because right now the thing we're seeing here in the United States and just North America in general is as I, as I mentioned earlier, is that there are a lot of property managers who you know are are looking to figure out what's their exit strategy to get out of this? Either because they just cannot continue to you know be you know doing what they're doing, and that either they're going to join a national brand or they're going to sell their inventory. So we have a lot of opportunity right now. I mean, it's it's never been better for for our brand in the United States uh, for for the continued growth, and we're we're really excited by that. So looking at the time, we, 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 we soon have to wrap this up and I want to uh, ask some uh, closing questions. And I think the first one to Nina before we go into the closing round will be, you know, during this very challenging time, especially for Croatia, or it's a very large inbound market. How have you as direct bookers been able to support your franchises during, during very challenging periods? So the uh, good thing is in these times uh, regarding our business model is that uh, we are not taking contra- uh, contracts as a master lease or some uh, similar contracts. It's all about commission. So they don't have a cost right now. If they don't have a profit, they don't need to pay us anything also. So it's all about income. Income stay everywhere. So that is the biggest problem. So sharing economy, sharing knowledge, sharing costs, we also now uh, took many of the costs from them to us as we have the headquarters if they want. And uh, that's the maximum that we can do, keep the cost low, but the income uh, will come sooner than later. Yeah, but I think I understand it correctly. You do, a, you do a lot of collaborative stuff, right? You do like meetup sessions for the franchisees so they can exchange ideas and, and, and talk to each other and learn from each other, right? Yeah, online and on site also. We have one time per year here meeting in Dubrovnik, it's a knowledge meeting, but it's also it's a team building. And uh, they all, all said that uh, they learn in those two days more than they learn uh, by themselves uh, on their field, because um, we are the, fr- uh, the company that is giving the franchise, but we cannot see their point. So when that we met them all together, it's uh, magnificent. Okay. Yeah, I think that's super important also during crisis time that you can uh, create value and, and, and obviously create loyalty despite uh, having uh, signed or introduced very, uh, you know, stringent contracts as well. I think uh, now it's time to stand together and make, make the best out of your partners because the stronger, obviously, your networks will come out of this, the, the stronger, the, the more it will grow. So in, in terms of a closing question, I want to, st- I want to start with Quirin. Um, if, if I'm a PM in Australia somewhere and I'm, I'm contemplating to join a, a Made Comfy uh, model, what would be my most important considerations to do that? What would be the most important? So I say that again. Consideration, excuse me. Like, what do I need to consider as a PM? And we'll probably have a lot of PMs in the audience today who are, you know, want to get to know more about this. And, 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 you know, obviously when you hear franchise, you, you think of, you know, protecting markets, high franchise fees, they're going to milk the hell out of me, this and that and the other. And, and, and for me, the question is, you know, if I'm a PM in Australia, I'm a, I'm a small size, I suffered, I want to be, I want to be sleep more comfortably, I want to be part of something larger where I can benefit, but also provide, what do I need to consider as a PM to join something like Make Comfy? 
Of course. So, um, a great question. So, number one, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about uh, uh, do you love what you uh, what you do? Do you uh, love this industry? If that is a tick, um, then um, a lot of things uh, can be done. Um, um, think about um, your sort of uh, local presence. Um, what is your your differentiation? What is the quality of your of your property portfolio? And um, think about. Um, do you think that you can uh, grow uh, 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 further in your market? And um, yeah, think also about how do you uh, fill uh, your properties in the near future? And um, if um, that is all, all of that questions in your head, um, I think that um, we are able to, to help, to assist. Um, if it is um, um, by joining Made Comfy at some point, or um, uh, simply um, uh, getting support from us. Um, we do that here very regularly as well. Um, um, yeah, uh, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we are very, very supportive and open. And uh, I'm uh, joining uh, Robin there. I'm very optimistic, um, especially in the ANZ market. It's going to be a super exciting time. All Australians, travel Australian, all New Zealanders come here, we go to New Zealand. So it's going to be really, really uh, interesting, exciting uh, times. Um, and I think in two years time, we will look back to that and think like, wow, um, that was for the whole vacation and short battle industry, um, uh, a, a super event in a, in a positive way that helped us to get a bigger, bigger footprint um, in the world. Thank you, Quirin. Great closing note from you. I mean, I was just thinking if you combine the three, four companies that are here on the on the screen today together will already be bigger than Vacasa. So that's an interesting <laughs> approach to to have in a pretty easy fashion. So forty five minutes conversation, we're we've got the solution. So Michael, uh, please give us your your views on why should I join you and and what do I need to consider? Sure, sure. I, I would I would echo some of the same same sentiment. I, I think you have to have a passion for this industry. I, I as you know, I love it, and I and that's something we're always looking for in the individual. Uh, but uh, for us, it's it's really, you know, also having that local presence, really understanding the local market, but really having that entrepreneurial mindset. For us, that's really, really critical because, you know, people who have, I call it that W-2 mindset, sometimes just will not make it in this industry because there is a lot of work to be done. And, you know, it, it's a lot of moving parts, but it's a fun industry. And, you know, the opportunity is endless. I think that, you know, one thing we're seeing, you know, coming out of COVID is that we're, like I said earlier, we're busier than ever. We have more opportunity than ever. And, it, and for the right people who, who see that value and what has happening in the vacation rental vertical, um, the sky's the limit. I mean, there's, there's really, really great opportunity. So we're, we're excited where we are and where we're positioned as a company here in North America. And then, you know, obviously hope, hope, hopefully future growth down the road, you know, internationally as well. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. What about you, Robin? I mean, you're you're in a tough spot to say the least in Spain as well, because obviously you you are an inbound market oriented as well. But I think growth opportunities, as you alluded to, could be tremendous for Club BMR in Spain. Being totally focused, I mean, who wants to hang out on the beach with 150,000 people in Spain now? People <laughs> want to go to Spain, but they want to hang out. You know, I read in the newspapers this weekend. Uh, people go to Benidorm. Normally, there's 175,000 people going to the beach in Benidorm. With social distancing, that would allow 30,000 going to the beach. So the other 150,000 have to sit at home. So that means, like mathematically, you can go to the beach every five days. That's pretty shitty. Um, so uh, in, 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 in your sense, Robert, I mean, it's, it's gold mining times. You have villas with pools. That everybody out of COVID wants to leave. But... What about joining you as Club AMR? What do they need to consider and what is important for you? Yeah, it is just, uh, you have to be serious about, uh, about growth. So uh, wherever your business is, uh, uh, be sure that we're, that we're going to push you uh, for growth. Because uh, that, the, the one of the main advantages of, of the franchise of, or the, the, the exclusive partner is uh, that we can grow uh, extremely fast. And if you're willing to grow extremely fast, then we can help you with that. And we have, so you can only think about the, the hospitality and running your business and make sure that you sign contracts and we'll take care of all, uh, all the rest. So uh, it's not seasonality, we're in this 24-7. Uh, Excellent. Thank you, uh, Robin. Last but definitely least, Nino, what, what do I need to consider to, uh, to join you as a franchise? Uh, we, we are all in a high growing industry and uh, it's logical to be in it. So uh, what we see as a, as an advantage is the value for money of our package. 
uh, you say costs from one side and from the other side you get technology brand know-how support even new income from selling technology so it's a win-win situation we are not uh, wanting to um, to ex make expansion by ourselves to use that opportunity and open in each destination by yourself so i have just taken each a word of each of you um to combine this as a, as a closing word. So first of all, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us across uh, many different time zones in the world. It shows that we can stand together and create good content for our audience and, and share our wisdom and views. And I really, I could have talked for you, uh, with you for a, long, a lot more time. I hope you will uh, get some, uh, some value out of this and, and obviously a lot of interest for people who have more questions. They will all find you, of course, and we will have the names and email addresses uh, out to the people uh, as well. But if I can summarize it, if you want to join a franchise model as a PM, which I think is, a, is an amazing opportunity right now, you have to love what you do. You have to be hungry for growth. You have to have passion and you have to realize value for money. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you very much to Michael, Robin, Nino, and uh, Quirin. Good night, good morning, good day, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Yep, thanks. Thank thanks. you very much. Ciao, ciao. Bye.